<laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed that. I did. I thoroughly enjoyed the Raptors going out there and dominating the game. Yeah, that's right. I said dominating the game. I thought the Raptors were absolutely excellent. And I just want to watch great basketball at this point. Why would I not? Why would I not want to see two great teams going at it in the NBA Finals and watching high-quality basketball? The Raptors, they gave me high-quality basketball today. Now, before the game started, about five or six hours before a tip-off, I tweeted this quote exactly. I have convinced myself the Raptors can win this series. It is pinned to the top of my Twitter, at Broad81, for proof. This is only one game, but going into this series, about five, six hours before a tip-off, I told myself, yeah, yeah, I think the Raptors actually can do this. It's only one game, and I remember 2001 with the 76ers. They won game one against the Lakers, and then what happened? They lost four in a row. It's just one game. But what I saw out of this Raptor squad today, it was extremely impressive. Defensively, it was a masterpiece. They are a problem. They are a problem. They can give you so many different looks, different length. They play with this intensity that is... Uh, amazing, amazing. Their defensive intensity is like me at the YMCA or at LA Fitness playing with the locals, 50-year-old dads and new balances. It's crazy. It's crazy, and I admire it so much. Spicy P today with the 32 points, 5 assists, 8 rebounds, he was all over the floor, whether it was in transition, whether it was dribbling in the half court and dribbling hard and going to the rack hard, whether it was hitting threes, whether it was driving and kicking out. The guy did it all. He was spectacular, a phenomenal debut in the NBA Finals, and he was the best player player on the floor. He was a monster today and almost unstoppable. He made 11 straight field goals at one point. It was sickening to see in a good way. And when you take a look at the Raptors as a whole, I stated going into this series, you need more than just Kawhi. It can't just be Kawhi. You need a full-on team effort. You got the full-on team effort. Now, Kawhi was held to a shooting percentage that we're not used to seeing. Still had 23 points. Still was a huge factor because he's such a superstar. He gained so much attention from all of the Warriors when they were on defense. It kind of opened up other players. But as a whole, take a look down the roster for the Raptors. Marcus Gasol had a monster first half and he finished with 20 points. We know what Spicy P did. Fred Van Vliet came off the bench and was a huge spark. Danny Green had three three-pointers. And, and McCall. McCall gets in the game and at the end of the third quarter, this guy drains a monster three. And, and it might sound silly, but at the time when that three happened, the Warriors were somewhat pushing. That was the quarter where the Warriors actually won. And I said to myself, as silly as it sounds, that three, that three right there that McCall hit, that could potentially have saved the game because the, it sparked the energy. The crowd went wild. Toronto was going nuts. Drake was going nuts. And it helped the Raptors kind of push back from the the Warriors push that they put on. Now, as great as the Raptors were and how awesome that they played, it felt like it was a 50-point game for the Raptors and it was only a 7-8 point lead because, well, you got to give credit to the Warriors. But realistically, outside of Steph Curry, and he shot 8 of 18 for his 34 points. No one else really stepped up. A couple shots by Clay. I thought Draymond Green defensively was trash. He was garbage. He couldn't really handle anything. The Warriors as a whole defensively, I thought they struggled. I, I don't know. I don't know. I expected Draymond Green to, to give a little bit more fight and a little bit more effort. Now you saw him and, and Drake getting after it after the game. Drake saying, you're trash. You're trash. I'm embracing the Drake thing. I mean, listen, Drake's my favorite artist, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. But I love it. And I even tweeted this out also. I'm big on the Twitter game, by the way. So you can follow me at Broads81 once again. But I, I tweeted a, a gif of Drake sitting on the sideline pointing right towards the camera. And I said, listen, I respect Drake, okay? Because if I was a rapper, Broads the rapper, and I had season tickets to the Sixers on, on the court, on the court side, I'm doing the same damn thing. It's called passion. It's called being a fan. I love it. I absolutely love it. I embrace it. I think it's funny as hell, and, and there's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. That's what makes it tough to go into Toronto, knowing you got Drake on the sideline yapping away. It's part of it, man. It's part of the culture. It's part of why the NBA Finals is amazing. But once again, going back to the defense by Toronto, they forced, what, 17-something turnovers? And not even. Some of them were unforced because the Warriors were just so out of it. The 
the Warriors were actually out of it. And the more I watched them, and the more I, I watched Iguodala, who was I, I thought would be more of a factor. Now he got hurt late in this game, but he, he's kind of washed up with his old age. He couldn't hang in there at all. You outside of of Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson watching some of these guys out there cook and then and, and whoever the hell, hell else went in there Bell uh, what is this what is that what is that and and who am I to question Steve Kerr because realistically okay let's look at the dynasty that they've had together sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm watching the rotation and, and I'm watching who's on the floor and with Sean Livingston and, and Bell and Cook and for a really significant amount of time in the second quarter, I'm saying, what what the hell is this lineup, and why is it out on the floor so long? Maybe I'm so used to the Sixers not having a bench that I scream whenever the bench comes in, and the Warriors have a bench that doesn't hurt them to the level that the Sixers did, so maybe I'm looking at it in a different mindset, but I'm sitting there saying, Steve Kerr, what, what the hell? But once again, who am I to criticize Steve Kerr and his decision-making after the run that they've been on? This game, though, from an entertainment standpoint, was there, and the place was absolutely electric. I thought all around the the Raptors crushed them, crushed them, crushed them, crushed them. Now, can they get a full, complete game out of that lineup every single night? We're going to have to see. You know, are the Warriors going to play like this every single night? I would assume there would be adjustments made. The Warriors are solid. Now, Boogie Cousins played. He was trash. Kevin Durant's out. Iguodala is injured. Uh, how long is, is Kevin Durant going to be out? There's a lot of question marks right now with the Golden State Warriors. And I'm not counting them out for this series. Realistically, if they take one of two in Toronto, that could be dangerous. One huge thing that I stated before this series started is the Raptors have to to act like the first two games in Toronto win you the championship. Because going up 2-0 heading back to Golden State is so much different than 1-1. And I'm not saying it's impossible for Toronto to win on the road or anything like that, but it is significant to be up 2-0 and it puts the pressure on Golden State going back to their home building way more way more. So they're in a good position. Toronto's in a good position. They kick their ass. You just can't deny it. And there's a lot of people out there. And, and I guess I'm surrounded by the Sixers culture and I see a bunch of salty Sixers fans tweeting out there, oh, the refs this, the refs that. Yeah, there were some late calls that, that I thought the refs waited to see if the basket went in or not and then it ended up electing to, to put Toronto at the free throw line a couple times. But I saw Kyle Lowry strip I believe it was DeMarcus Cousins in the post all ball and they called that a foul and send Boogie to the line. I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of Sixers fans, so I see a lot of saltiness and a lot of hate. I don't see it that way. I want to see good basketball. The NBA Finals to me is is absolutely outstanding. It's one of my favorites ever. And why would I sit there and despise it because of a team that beat us? The the Toronto Raptors earned this. Okay, the Toronto Raptors earned this game and earned their run all playoff long. They're playing hot. They're playing good. They're a solid damn team. Why would I sit here and just say I hate them? I hate them because they beat us in Game Seven on a buzzer beater. No, I'm not gonna sit there and say that. That was a hard ass fought series that we lost on a bouncer that hit the rim four times. Now, the Raptors dominated the Bucks there in six, and they went on a nice run after losing the first two games, and then they just they just beat down the Golden State Warriors due to their defensive intensity and ability to make shots offensively. One thing, though, that blows my mind, one thing, though, that literally blows my damn mind is there has to be a magnet on these rims in Toronto because the amount of shots that the Toronto Raptors as a whole uh, banks it off the glass, hit, the rim, twirls around six times and then falls. Or, you know, they're closing their eyes and they're going one of these from 75 feet out and somehow it, it hits the rim six times, swirls around and goes in. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but there's clearly something going on, I swear to you, because it just doesn't make sense. You know, I'm trying to trying to bring out the, uh, you know, science where mathematics and angles and I don't even know. It doesn't make sense. Woo! But I'll tell you what. That was awesome to me. That was awesome to me. So I want to know your thoughts down below. Sixers fans, you hate it? I don't. Raptors fans, you love it? You should. Warriors fans, do you love it? You shouldn't. But let's not act like the series is over. There's a reason why the Warriors have had so much success over the years. 
It's one game. It's a great game. It's a great first game. It's one game, though. And there's a reason why it's seven, and there's a reason why the Warriors have had the success that they've had. Now, let's see how both teams respond on Sunday. They get a couple days here. Let's see how they both respond on Sunday. But I can't wait. I love the NBA Finals, and I wanted this. I wanted the Raptors to win Game 1 because it creates an awesome storyline. The Warriors win Game 1. Maybe it's a little bit of a blowout, 10-point, 12-point lead, and they win kind of easily. Everyone goes, oh, there's the Warriors again. The Raptors win. Now look at it. Now it's more exciting. Now there's more content. Now there's more conversation. Look what Kawhi did. Look what Siakam did. Look what Gasol did. Look what they got off the bench. It's more entertaining as a as a sportsman. And not only just for as a fan of the game, but someone who loves to talk about sports and to give my opinion about sports. This is the best situation for me. I'm embracing it. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. Can't wait till Sunday. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.